So AOC just contributed a boatload of cash to the Democratic Party, and now Armageddon is upon us, up is down. Dogs and cats are living together, and nobody knows what to do with themselves. So recently, in a much longer video, I offered a full-throated defense of Representative Ocasio-Cortez. Look it up. She's the bete noire of the Republican establishment, and too often, the Democratic establishment as well. Now, I've listened to the objections of corporate Democrats to her youth, her tactics, her priorities, her dancing, her dresses, you name it. And more recently, we've heard the objections of progressives who claim that she's caving in to the status quo. Well, if that's the case, she's not going to earn any marks from progressives for her recent contribution of $260,000 for the Democratic Party's Voter Protection Program, an initiative designed to register voters and preserve voting integrity. It's also a rainy day fund for the inevitable legal challenges that the Republicans will mount in the upcoming free and fair election and most likely beyond. Then again, her PAC has also committed a half a million dollars to defending squad members. AOC is a fundraising machine. She has been since she ousted Joe Crowley. According to Open Secrets, the Congresswoman has raised six and a half million dollars in this election cycle alone. And she's still sitting on over six million in cash on hand despite having spent a little more than five and a half million. See, she's been stockpiling cash since 2019 and outraising her colleagues by orders of magnitude. And here's why I don't listen to criticism from fellow leftists when it comes to AOC. Not that anyone is infallible. It's that AOC is a titan in the making. She's only 34 years old and already one of the most recognizable figures in America. She makes bold choices, not all of them fantastic, but always eye-catching and headline-grabbing. She's polarizing because the higher her profile gets, the more she's villainized by the right, and the more she scares the centrists. Not only is she beating most House members in the recognition game, she's beating them at their game, the money game, and not in a Marjorie Taylor Greene sort of way by fear-mongering and stupidity, but through advocating and teaching. In fact, one of the most underrated aspects of her tenure that's lost on older people like my demographic is how she engages with her 8 million followers on Instagram. She's a teacher and a guide, lets them know what's happening behind closed doors, and literally teaches young people about the legislative process. It's a masterclass in community engagement and public square advocacy for the modern age, and she's peerless in this regard. Now, critics within the establishment are quick to diminish her, saying she's a lone voice on the far left. But she's a ranking member on the Vital Oversight and Reform Committee, where she has set herself apart by coming prepared, bringing receipts, and scoring points with intelligence and bravado. Even Republicans admit that she's a force to be reckoned with on this committee, and many of them have backed down from high-profile spats for fear of retribution from her legion of followers, like Swifties. I see in Ocasio-Cortez a seasoned politician beyond her years in life and in office who's carefully crafting a standout role in an aging party. And time is on her side in this regard. You know, it wasn't that long ago that Nancy Pelosi was chiding her in private and in public. Did AOC throw a tantrum or pull the bullshit that the Freedom Caucus has done on the other side of the aisle? Nope. She waited and raised a lot of money and stayed in the public eye. She licked her wounds, took her criticism, apologized when need be, and the Pelosi's of the world now are fading away as a younger generation moves in. Which is not to say that things will just get better. It's just that seasoned politicians who know their way around the beltway and have lost enough battles to learn how to win them are the ones who eventually call the shots, especially if they become fundraising machines, like AOC. And now that she's spreading the wealth, and in a very specific way, she's basically announced the next chapter in her career. And for those who expected more from her and want her to vote against every single thing that either party ever puts on the table, you're missing the point. If you want pure principle, that's for activists like Medea Benjamin and Nina Turner, Angela Davis, Christian Smalls, and Ralph Nader. When you elect representatives, you're looking for people on the inside who understand how to pull the levers and make deals. Now, there are 435 of these assholes, and our job is to find the assholes that know when to pucker and when to make a stink. And if you're looking for bomb throwers to dismantle the system, that's not what this is. From minute one, when James Madison was struggling to find common ground with slave-owning colony representatives, it was decided that we would have something called the Senate. And the Senate would serve as the great, quote, 
cooling mechanism that restricted purely ideological instincts. Do I think that AOC and the squad should have and could have, for example, done more to protect the most important provisions in the Build Back Better bill and force Biden's hand? You bet. AOC was elected in 2019, though, and Build Back Better was 2021. That's a lot to put on somebody who's been in the job for two years. And oh, by the way, the squad is just the House. Remember, there's that prickly thing called the Senate. And at the time, we had Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin to contend with, and so promises were broken. Compromises were made, and we got what we got. But guess what? Manchin, leaving. Sinema, leaving. Pelosi, just rank and file. If you're not patient, then politics isn't for you. Agitation, activism, protest, these things happen outside of the system to raise enough awareness and noise that the people inside the system respond. But the great equalizer in this equation in the past couple of decades, however, has been money. Money beats protest all day, every day, especially now because of Citizens United. But now, this 34-year-old with only five years under her belt has managed to raise over $37 million since getting elected. 8 million followers, $37 million raised, prime committee assignments. AOC's not selling out, she's taking over. And the best thing that we can do is stay out of her way, back her play, and let her continue to grow into the role. One by one, the old guard will retire. They'll fade away or they'll just die. And if it comes to the point when she loses the plot and sells her soul, then we can protest and agitate against her. But until that time, I'll leave you with this. The historical corollary that I drew in the longer AOC piece. When Rosa Luxemburg challenged the establishment socialists of her time, she too built coalitions and fought within her parties. She challenged the likes of Karl Kautsky in her home country and Lenin and Trotsky in Russia. She threw herself into the challenges of the day when it wasn't yet clear whether capitalism would even survive, when there was a real opportunity for a socialist revolution from Russia to Latin America. But when leftists wanted to revolt against the German SPD to spread the revolutionary flames that burned in Russia and toppled the German government, Luxembourg preached caution. She said Germany wasn't ready, that the revolutionary conditions were not yet prime in Germany, much to the chagrin of the revolutionaries who ultimately ignored her and attempted a coup anyway. And in the midst of it all, Luxembourg was murdered, her body thrown into a river, her memory largely forgotten to history. No statues, no movies, no holidays. So sometimes it seems that nothing short of martyrdom will suffice for leftists and that AOC is the avatar that they choose to project their armchair criticisms upon. So take heed of Bloody Rosa and remember that in America, it's not a chess match. It's a high stakes poker game and the minimum bid is in the millions. And there's a new player at the high stakes table now who will not be denied.